our senses. By what's tangible and easy to comprehend. There are days when it seems we're going nowhere fast. Trust your faith to show you the truth. Give a listen to what faith says to you. Status is changing, decline has declined I'm on my way to better days Status is changing, decline has declined I'm on my way to better days Status is changing, decline has declined to be here with you on tonight. You got a good thing going, amen? amen. Clap your hands all over this room. Psalm 143, verse number nine. Sincerely speaking, I only need about seven minutes to make this play. Psalms 143, Verse number nine. When you have it, I've got it. Bible records, deliver me, O God, from mine enemies. I flee to you to hide. I run to you for shelter. I flee to you to hide. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I'm coming to you for shelter. You may rest yourselves in the presence of the Lord. There's, there's no doubt in this hour, and I want you to hear me, a genuine desire to be delivered on one level or another. There's a wealth of uh, spiritual status and, and complexions represented here today. But I think the commonality is that genuine desire that we all possess at one stage or another in our lives to be delivered. Someone say, Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Um, sometimes, and this is a turn off to religious minds because once delivered, always delivered, but sometimes we need to be delivered from spiritual locations. We can become so identifiable in a spiritual location until we become self-righteous. Am I right about it? And it's only until God takes us to another place in Him that we understand how bad we need it to be delivered. I believe that the goal of deliverance, and I took the liberty of logging this on today, I believe that the goal of deliverance is to bring us into a place whereby we can make daily decisions. Someone say daily decisions. Daily. Goal of deliverance is to bring us to a place whereby we can make daily decisions that strengthens our relationship with God. Deliverance is not an influence that overtakes us and snatches us out of the clutches of the enemy or detaches us from a practice. But deliverance in its purest sense is the ability to make daily decisions that strengthens your relationship with God. Would suggest to me, and just consider it if you will, that there are some decisions that we make as believers, as men, that weakens our relationship with God. Am I right about it? That there are some decisions that we make as believers and as men in general that weakens our relationship with God. And the same is said, some decisions that we make can strengthen our relationship with God. The tricky aspect about this whole decision-making component is that decisions are a part of every facet of our lives. We will never achieve destiny without making a decision. We will never take on the right direction in life without making a decision. Am I right about it? Yes. We will never experience deliverance. I'm talking about divine deliverance without making proper decisions. And certainly we can be responsible for our own demise, our own death, if we make the wrong decision. Am I right about it? And so all decisions must be influenced 
by God. Dr. Jimmy Staten is my hero. He is my hero. Separate from Jesus Christ, my father, and a few others, Dr. Jimmy Staten, Mount Calvary Baptist Church here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is my hero. And he intoxicated me with some, I mean, uh, Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Every endeavor in life, every decision that we make in life should have God's print on it. Am I right about it? You should not endeavor to do anything without the endorsement of God. And so if we need to be delivered into a different dimension of God, if we need to be delivered from a certain practice, if we need to be delivered, blessed be God, from a certain place that could be considered sinful, then it's going to take the enabling power of God to bring us out of darkness, the old saint said, into the marvelous light and or revelation. Am I right about it? I choose to believe this as believers. Let me see the hand of the believers in the room on tonight. As believers, we're under a different mandate. We are not governed or bound by sin. Sin for the believer was defeated at Calvary. Whenever we, blessed be God, participate in sin, it is due to a decision that we make to disobey God. Am I right about it? We're not bound by sin as the unbeliever. We are, blessed be God, practitioners of sin by our own choice. Are y'all listening to me? So many times we like to blame the influence of a habit and or an addiction, the devil himself or demons assigned to our lives. And pastor, it's just been so hard because of what I've been struggling with. And the Lord began to reveal to me whenever the believer began to practice in sin and become a participant in sin, it is because he or she has deliberately decided to disobey the word of God. Am I right about it? And so sin is not an issue for the believer. We need the enabling power of the Holy Spirit so that we can make the right decision so that when sin is an option, we still choose God. Are you listening to me? See, I'm, 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 I'm from a different persuasion. I'm cut from a different cloth. I am not of the persuasion, blessed be God, that is condescending in my communication. I, blessed be God, have grappled with some things that have de detached me from the will of God, the way of God, and the word of God. And after evaluating and assessing the devastating effect of my decisions, I better understand now that I had more control over the situation than what I thought. I had much more control than what I thought. And many of us were giving our victory over to the will of the enemy because we choose to stand up and be who we are in God. Am I right about it? Every decision that we make will affect some level of change, be it positively or negatively. Am I right about it? And so, I want you to log this if you're taking notes or put it in your memory bank. Real deliverance happens, listen to this, because this is going to be oxymoronic in its presentation, but very blessed be God, empowering its source. Real deliverance happens when we decide, listen to this, to be bound by something else. You cannot be delivered without being bound again. Sin is saved until you started doing the other list. You put down one list and you pick up another list. Paul was delivered from the clutches of the enemy only to become a slave to Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? So you cannot be delivered definitively until you have decided to be bound again. I'm yoked to him. I'm bound 
by Jesus Christ. I am a prisoner, the Apostle Paul said, of Jesus Christ. And prisoners don't decide what they eat. They don't decide what they wear. They don't decide when they go to sleep. They don't decide when they get up. They don't decide their dwelling place. It is all decided for them because they are bound. Just like the devil told you what to do, that's what you said at least. God's going to tell you what to do. I wish I had some help here. Just like the devil made you do it, that's what you said. God's going to make you do it. So, so, so you're holding a fist in your heart and you refuse to love and you refuse to forgive because that's just your personality. When somebody do me wrong, you know, I just hold it in. I've always been like this since I was a little girl. He says, no, 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 no. When you are bound by Jesus Christ, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How do you know when you are delivered? When you are bound by something else. Jesus. Okay, okay. Take a seat, Pastor. Y'all pushing me. Um, the Bible says something so interesting that I think is 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 worth uh, talking about for a moment. Um, it says something so interesting. Um, it says in James chapter number four, verse number seven. I was reading it earlier. It says, um, "Submit yourself also to God." Resist the devil and he will help me somebody flee. Why, why would your enemy get a picture of this? Why would your enemy with a gun in his hand chase you in the police station? I don't care what you did to him. If you run in the police station, chances are you will be safe. So he says, submit yourself to God, the police station, resist the devil, and guess what? He said, oh, no, 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 no. He's, he's in church now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, no man can serve two masters. I wish I had some help here. I, I, I'm barking up the wrong tree now because he, he can't serve me and serve God at the same time. The only folk that grapple with the enemy's influence are the individuals who are not Definitively submitted to God. Am I making any sense here? Watch what, what, this. Watch this. I'll, I'll say it another way since y'all ain't filling me with this one, huh? Uh, to submit simply implies to take on another's mission. So when you submit to Word of Faith Ministry or Word of Faith Church, you take on the mission of this man of God. Wow. Wow. So it doesn't matter how you did it at your old church. Y'all don't like me here no way, so I might as well make you mad. It really doesn't matter, bless be God, how they function at your old church because when you submit to him, you take on his mission. When you are submitted to the devil, you take on the devil's mission. But contrary, when you are submitted to God, you take on God's mission. And you know what happens when you take on the mission of God? You start producing the fruit of being led by the Spirit of God. You, you know the tree by the fruit it bears. Huh? You, you know the tree by the fruit it bears. So you cannot communicate anything that contradicts what you are producing. Your communication must be congruent with what you are producing because if your communication contradicts what you are producing, then I've got to look at the tree. And then I've got to make an assessment based on the fruit that the tree is bearing. And that determines whether or not you are submitted to righteousness or unrighteousness. You don't have to tell folk you're saved when you produce fruit. You don't have to tell folk that you got the Holy Ghost when you produce fruit. You don't have to tell folk that you're connected to the kingdom when you're producing fruit. 
I am a sinner. You never really seen a shirt like that. <laughs> Negroes just sin. I wish I had some help here. <laughs> they don't need to advertise it. They just do what sinners do. Am I right about it? But we walk around with shirts and bumper stickers because we have to convince folk uh-huh. via marketing yeah. what we can't convince oh them with uh. via our lives. Oh my God, my God. All right, come on. We are living, help me somebody, yes. epistles. Yes. 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 So when folks see you, they ought to read your story in your behavior. Yes. Your, 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 your behavior. Um, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. It's the line of demarcation, old and new. There's a new behavior that comes with the new. Am I right about it? And so, with the new behavior, you don't have to convince folk that you've changed. Lose 40 pounds and see if you would have to convince anybody that you lost weight. Folks going to say, man, you looking good. Look at you. You look at you, look at you boy. You ain't got to tell nobody, you know, you ain't got to wear your clothes tight, none of that other stuff. All you got to do is just show up to the family union. And folks will, watch this now, they will compliment the change. So why we've been saved seven years and folk on our job don't even know we saved. Oh, if folk would come to church and see some of us worshiping, they'll be so shocked. They wouldn't even know what to do. Huh? Because that ain't the mission you had at work. That's not the mission we just talked about last night. Huh? Because when you take on the mission of Christ, it affects change yes. in your behavior. Yes. Yes. When you take on the mission of the kingdom, it affects change in the way you relate, respond, and react to life crises. Yes. Yes. How are you listening to me? Huh? I'll say one more thing and I'll let y'all go because y'all don't like me here. I don't know why. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, um, after this, if then deliverance is being submitted to another's mission, then we must evaluate the dimension of our submission to determine the dimension of our deliverance. Our mindset, our mission, our mannerisms, our methods in life must agree with the methods, mindset, mannerisms, and the mission of Jesus Christ. Nothing residing in the believer should be contrary to the mission. Um, when a soldier um, enlists in the military and he or she produces behavior contrary to what they've been taught, that's why you've got to be taught how to live life. You know, some, some folk, you know, they get two scriptures and a song and, you know, they don't need no pastor. Come on, come on, that's right. Yeah. You, you, you got, you, you've got to be taught. You've got to be taught how to serve God. Huh? Huh? Instructions are imperative. Am I right about it? Um, because in no other professional field or context uh, could we contradict by way of behavior, deed, word, uh, the way that we do in Christendom, and still wear the label. That's true. That's so true. Um, there's a measure of integrity that goes with our commitment to God. I'm winding down now, right? <coughs> there, there, there's a measure of commitment. And sometimes, uh, Dr. Stokes, God, God, the only way that he can deliver us, y'all ain't gonna like this, but I gotta say it anyhow, and the only way that he can deliver us, little brother, is that he has to expose us. Oh, that's true. That's true. He exposes sometimes to deliver. Yes. Can I be transparent just for a moment? Yes. 
um, I received a letter about six years ago. I was teaching and preaching and this young lady, she sat in the church and she, she made an annoying sound the whole service. Mm-hmm. Couldn't hear it during worship, but you know, during teaching, it got so annoying until a couple of the ministers, female ministers, would have stood and asked her, you know, would you like to be excused or would you like to go outside because, you know, you know. and um, she was travailing, I guess. And after service, she came up as I was greeting her and she put this long letter in my hand, maybe a six page letter. And um, what provoked me to read it was that everything was written in pencil, but there was in bold red writing, please read. I've heard from God. I've heard from God, saying that she's gotten this directly from God. Are y'all with me? And as I began to read it, she began to pinpoint areas of the ministry that would be dismantled if not confronted and changed. Wow. And have you ever been so arrogant? I know y'all ain't never been like that because y'all been saved ever since you've been saved. Have you ever been so arrogant until you almost felt invincible? Mm. (coughs) God will give all of us leverage at one stage or another in our lives to be, you know, on the top of something. And, And that can bring such an arrogance until you almost feel invincible. And so even though this made sense, it didn't apply to me. And you know what God said? What's your name right here? Chanel, God says, Tori, I love you so much. I have a future and a plan designed for your life that will bring a major contribution to this generation. And I want it to be fulfilled in the earth so bad until, watch this, I'm going to expose you in order to deliver you. I'm going to, see, when we talk about exposure, we talk about sexual immorality or money. Come on up higher, a little higher, a little higher. God God says, I'm going to put you in positions to reveal to you that your motive Uh is not connected to me. You are fostering and you're using my time to foster and to produce your own agenda. Y'all don't like me anyway, so I might as well be real. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If I took it all away from you, I'm 31, 32, living in a $600,000 house, driving, you know, what I want to drive. You know, in and out of the country all the time, you know. He says, but you know what? Get two, three books out, you know. One book for the first time, my first time off.